Hey folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to the next episode in our Unity 3D tutorial where we create custom meshes and basically try to clone some city and make a bajillion dollars. Or, you know, maybe we'll just make the roads. Um, yeah, so now we're finally going to get to the stage where we are going to enable sort of click dragging with the mouse and cause the road length to be based on what we actually did with our mouse and also the direction of it. And they are very tightly linked. So, a couple of changes that have to happen. Um, First of all, the input, right now we just spawn the road instantly when we click down on the mouse. Well, we don't want to do that. What we want to do is when we click on the mouse, we want to capture that location and just hold on to it, let the player move the mouse, go to an area, and then when they release the mouse, that's when we're going to create the road. Okay? I mean, ideally in a game, you also have certain visuals that are showing you what's going on, and we'll, we'll deal with that later, perhaps. Um, so clearly what we need is we need a we need to hold on to the initial click location, right? And that's going to be a vector 3, and we'll call that road start. And we're already kind of thinking in the road start mentality, right? We want to capture, well, where does the road begin? So here, for example, we actually just want to populate that. Road start is equal to hit info dot point. And then we're going to want to do something on uh, on the mouse up. So I'm actually going to move some of the code just ever so slightly here. I'm going to do my own sort of um, uh, get click location. I don't know, something like that. Okay, some function I'm going to create. I'm going to have it be a bool, so it'll return true or false based on whether we've actually clicked the actual road or not. And I'm going to have an out parameter which I don't play with very often, and it's going to simply be the location. We're going to return sort of something with a point. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is chop some of this out <clears throat> like this. Mostly going to be the same. Um, it's going to set point to be equal to that and return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. So if the mouse button gets clicked down, then if, and we could do an and here, but I think that there's going to be something about the structure that'll make it better this way. If click location, um, I guess we can just feed it to road start right away. We may not even need to do an if over here, actually. We can just feed, like, get the, the click location into road start. All right, so that's one. All we're going to do is save the, the road start, and then we're going to do an if input dot get mouse button. Do you guys know the difference between get mouse button and get mouse button down and up? Get mouse button will return true if the mouse is currently down and false if it is currently up. Get button down will return true if the mouse button was clicked down this frame, and get mouse button up will return true if the mouse came up this frame. So we want to know, so here, if the mouse button went down this frame, we want to store that location, and then if it went up this frame, we want to actually create the road based on that. Um, and again, um, if, here we definitely need an if. If click location, so this is going to be called vector3, uh, road end out road end do I have to instantiate this or not? I guess we're going to find out then we're going to create road and we're going to create a road from road start to road end which I know doesn't match the parameters and then the other thing we're going to do is regardless of whether we actually clicked the, the ground or not when the mouse comes up we're going to set road start to be blank. Um, I guess we can't actually do that. We can't actually set it to a null. Eh, this will probably work. We'll, we'll come back and, and do it later. Let's not overthink things. But our create road definitely has to change because we're creating a road from something to something. So we've got that. Now, let's find out if we're working right now. It's not going to work the way we want, but it's going to potentially... I just want to see if we've got any errors. Okay, the out parameter point needs to be assigned... Oh, really? I didn't realize it had to be assigned to something no matter what. 
All right, so we'll just set it to be vector 3.0. I'm just going to set it to a null, the null vector. Because you can't actually have nulls with the vectors because they're like fundamental objects like an int and things. They're not like a normal class and blah, 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 blah. Things. It's a, it's a big thing. I keep wanting to set vectors to null. All right, good. Now, the, big, the only difference is that right now, the row doesn't create until I release. So I don't know if you can hear the mouse click, but I'm going to click down. And I'm going to release. So it only shows up on release, which is good. Uh, the problem is it's still not orientating itself anywhere. So we're part of the way there. Um, so yeah, the create road needs something. So most of it is good. What needs to change? Well, for one, the length, right? Right now we're setting the length to a random number. Well, that's stupid. What is the length actually going to be? Well, it's going to be the distance between road start and road end. All right, all right, let's, let's try that. So I'm going to click and then drag a tiny bit and release. Well, that is a short road. And then I'm going to click and go a long way and release. That is a pretty long road. Now, it still doesn't pay attention to the direction, but it sure pays attention to the distance. Well, that was easy. All right, that, that's one. So now the direction is a bigger question. How do you do it? Well, there's a few different ways. I mean, again, you know, we're just creating a sort of a, a basic box here. What we could do is take these vectors and sort of change the X and Z part of them based on, you know, the sort of angle of the road. Listen, we don't want to do anything that complicated. Good God. Can you imagine? No, no, no. We're just going to take our entire game object and rotate it. Because the nice thing about the game object is we've made sure that the origin of it is exactly where we click, right? Right here. And all we have to do is rotate around this point so that the angle of the road matches the angle of our start and end sort of difference. Well, we can do that. It's pretty easy. So road.rotation, uh, road.transform.rotation is equal to something. What is it equal to? Well, it's equal to some sort of quaternion. All right. Um, what's a quaternion? Well, that's complicated, but you want to use qu quaternions for your rotations. Um, you know, you read up some documentation. I am not a quaternion master, but you use them for rotations and they avoid an infinite number of problems. I mean, you have to use them for rotations regardless, but you could always like, you know, sort of fake it by just feeding it some Euler coordinates, which is you feed it some amount of rotation. So for example, here we could rotate the road um, the way we want, basically by just rotating around the Y coordinate. So let's make a road at 45 degrees, okay? This is a pretty simple way of making it work. So now if I spawn the road, it'll be rotated by 45 degrees. Awesome. This approach, because, okay, how do you want to get this angle? Well, that's a good question. We want, this is, this is a float of some kind. So let's call it angle. Um, and yeah, so we want to, populate this with what? Well, so there's a couple of different things. You can do a vector 3 dot angle, and it'll give you the angle between your two vectors. Um, and what, what would that angle be? Well, let's think about it. Because the first time, every time I do this, every time I'm always like, oh, from and to. Well, it's from road start to road end. This, this is not right. Um, because here, again, road start and road end are really points. And the vector 3 is really looking at angles in a very different way. What you want to do, uh, and let me open, uh, let me open paint. Because you don't want the angle between those two. It's just like from two. Every time I think, well, I'm going from here to there. And how long does it seriously take to open paint? Oh my god, computer. I know, I'm recording. Life is hard. Okay. So what you want because what you're interested in for your rotation is you want the angle from the horizontal because a road is being laid out on the x-axis right now horizontally right this is currently how it's happening but when we do our click I guess I can hold shift yeah when we do our click we are defining some how do I stop it from being selected I, I clearly don't use paint a lot let's say we're doing a mouse drag from here to here right the angle we're curious about is this angle so what we're looking for is the from the left-right axis, the x-axis, to the angle, the vector that is defined from the click start to the click end. So our angle, the, the from, is from vector 3 dot right, so going to the right, to road end minus road start. The difference of the two of them. 
and then compared to the angle on the right. I think this will get us, this will actually get us pretty much there uh, with a couple of caveats. So click, drag, holy crap, that works. Except it doesn't. So why doesn't it work? Well, there's reasons. So how far does it work? That's the question. Let's let's get some outputs. We've already got a debug.log, okay, on the right here. Let's get rid of that. Okay, let's find out why the angle doesn't work. What is the angle being generated by this? Well, there's a good question. So I'm going to draw one mostly horizontally, but slightly down. So it's an angle of three. Yeah, that sounds right. Just three degrees off the, the horizontal. And then here, this will be about 45 degrees, 38. Okay. Again, it, because it's not, it's a perspective camera and it's a little, it's not directly straight down. So if we go more or less straight down, it's going to be pretty close to 90. So 91. Yeah. All right. That looks good. And then over here, that's still fine. And then what if I go, if I go to the left, but slightly down, it's going to be close to 180. Yeah. 175. Let me just clear the screen here. So let me go from right to left, but slightly above. So this would be slightly greater than 180. Except it's not. Why is it not greater than 180? Well, because the way that that angle gets calculated is it's truly giving you what's the difference between this um, left-right and, and the angle that I drew, and it takes the shortest line. So, for example, if I go from um, here and I go up slightly, it's going to give me an angle, you know, very small angle. And that's true. It's an 18-degree angle. That's great. But it doesn't tell me that it's just telling me the difference between the two angles. It's not giving me anything about the direction. It's just saying these two lines are 18 degrees apart. Done. But yeah, but is it 18 degrees going down or is it 18 degrees going up? And that is the, the shortfall of this approach. So this correctly gives you the difference in angle, but it doesn't give you what you want in this case. So what do we want? Again, we got to use some quaternions. So we got a quaternion and we actually, for whatever reason, there's no, there's no static for this, which seems odd to me. Uh, no, I'm wrong. Quaternion from two rotation. That's what we want. So let me get rid of this garbage here. And this again, not currently working. So from two rotation on quaternion, this will generate a rotation that will guarantee you getting from one orientation to the other orientation. And again, the from is still going to be vector three dot right. And the two is still going to be the difference between road end and road start. And that is going to give us our target rotation. I think, I think I haven't screwed this up. Let's find out. We're left to right and slightly up. See, already it's working. Uh -huh. Yeah, all the way around. It all works exactly the way we want. Because the difference between the two, one tells you the angle between two roads as in terms of like a distance, and the other tells you what kind of rotation you, is required to get you from one to the other. All right? And you can, uh, you can even, we can do after we set the rotation, we can do a debug.log, rotation dot uh, Euler angles, and then we'll get a nice little layout about like exactly what kind of uh, rotation is being generated here. See? And we're going to go all the way around the clock from zero, or sort of from, so this is the zero plus a little bit. If I play the game again, zero plus a little bit. There you go, seven degree angle, about 45 degree, about 90 degree, about 180, about 270, I'm way off there. Uh, and down to up will be the 360. Oh no, no, this will be the 270, there you go. And then if I go left to right, but slightly up, it'll be close to 360 degrees, which is Correct. But again, you don't actually want to play with Euler angles because there's all sorts of things with negative rotations and all sorts of problems. Blah, 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 blah. Quaternions, man. I mean, if you're only used, like, if you're like me and you didn't do all that much, like, high end math past, you know, high school and the first couple of years of university, quaternions are a foreign beast. Um, and I don't claim to be a master of them but you need to learn enough that you're working with them. Whenever you're trying to do anything involving angles and rotations, assume that the quaternion is the right thing to use. All right? So, um, God, this is, this is pretty decent. Now we are correctly building roads based on our drag and drop. The question becomes, what other kind of improvements can we put into that? Uh, and I think there will be one more video as we look into a slightly different way 
of pulling this off. See you next time, folks. Bye-bye.